Lord, we praise your holy name and we thank you so much for what you're doing right now in each of these women's hearts and in mine. I pray right now, Lord, that I would fall away dimly and just be in the background and you would speak powerfully through me exactly as you will. I pray I would be completely obedient and in line with your will. Lord, I'm so honored that you would let me share this. And oh, we just thank you for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, this summer, I went to Lisa Turk, her She Speaks conference. You know, Proverbs 31 Ministry. Some of y'all might have heard of that. Actually, I didn't go to it. Everything was virtual, so I watched it on my computer. But um, one of the things that I learned, and sorry, I'm on allergy medicine, so my mouth is dry, so I'm going to do this a bunch. One of the things that I learned was um, every time God is giving you a message, just start writing it. You don't have to have a reason or have something coming up. Just start writing it. So... I was at the beach this summer. That is my happy place. I just, I love the beach. And one of my favorite things is I get to have time in the Word in the morning, and then I'll go out on the beach and exercise. I'll either walk or go running. But it's so special just seeing all of it and the sounds, and it's just a special time, me and God, alone. And I love it. And I was walking on the beach, and God spoke to me, and I, I want to clarify that. When I say he spoke to me, I don't mean it was a booming voice from the clouds going, Pamela, and everybody on the beach was like, oh. Um, what I'm talking about is in John 10, 27, it says that the sheep know the shepherd's voice. The sheep know his voice, and that's what it is. It's beautiful every time I know it's God. It's not me coming up with something, and this was one of those times. And he was urging me to start writing this message. And through tears, I told him, but God, you know, I've, I've got these ridiculous issues that I keep struggling with, and I should be past this by now. And there are women who are so much more mature and farther in their walk, and they don't have these issues like I do. And they're good Christians. I mean, can you hear it? Is there anyone else here today who might feel unworthy sometimes? And in that moment, he immediately responded to me, stop. Put those issues aside, and I'll handle those. Just follow me. Isn't that beautiful that he would take imperfect people and say, come on, just follow me. I'll take care of it. And so I want to encourage y'all. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's ever felt that way. And so as you in the room are learning these things, if you start to sense that he's moving you to step out in faith and take a risk. Let him do that. It's so exciting. And I'm going to get in trouble probably because um, I'm going to embarrass them. But there are these two women who I really admire that I was thinking of when I was like, oh, but they don't struggle with this ridiculous stuff. It's Renee McDaniel and Helen Osterman. <laughs> so I'll probably get in trouble for that. But I love them so much. I love you ladies. Y'all are awesome. Okay, so let's fast forward. It's September 21st. I'm back at home in Poteet, and I'm on a run, and I am praising God. We've been working on this message, and I'm just telling him, I cannot wait to get back home and sit at the dining room table, just you and me, Lord, with our Bible, and just all these truths are becoming so clear, and I get to know him better, and it's such an intimate, special time, just me and the Lord, and as I'm Getting closer to the house, I'm almost to the back door, and the phone rang, and it was Rebecca, and she asked me if I'd speak at this conference. I was crying so hard I couldn't answer her, but I'm pretty sure she knew the answer was yes. But how wonderful to know that he was preparing this back this summer, and it was for this time. And now I see more clearly, not knowing what Heidi was going to say, 
this is all for you, and it's a powerful message from him. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into, can you believe what has happened this past year? I want to just take a second, and if you'll all pretend like where you're sitting right now, let's say that we're at last year's conference, okay? And you're sitting where you are, and we're on a potty break, and I jump up on the microphone, and I'm like, hey, y'all, I've got a quick announcement. Um, I know everything that's about to happen in the next year, so real quick, a few little things. Um, there's going to be this virus that starts in China, but it's going to escape, and it's going to go around the world, and it's called a pandemic, and a bunch of people are going to die from it. Fear. Can you feel it? Um, the airports are going to close. Flights will be canceled, kind of like 9-11. Remember that? That was weird. Um, you know how you turn on the news and you see all those Chinese people walking around in masks, like those doctors' masks? And it looks like, oh, my gosh, why did they do that? Okay, that's about to be here, like here. Um, you're going to be asked to stay at home and don't leave unless you have to go to the grocery store or something. You're also going to be asked... Please don't spend Thanksgiving or Christmas with family and friends. Um, your church is going to close, and you'll watch it on the computer. Your school's kids, they're all going to close, and they'll do school on the computer. Um, all businesses except for essential businesses will be closed. So like grocery stores will be open and a few other kinds of industries. Um, oh, the NFL, that's an essential business. Uh, <laughs> millions of Americans are going to lose their jobs in like a really short period of time. So that could be you. And if you're married, your spouse might um, stress. Uh, oh, I mentioned grocery stores. On your way home this afternoon from the grocery store, just grab an extra pack of toilet paper. Um, <laughs> There's going to be riots, and businesses will be set on fire. Um, there's going to be a lot of racial tension, a whole lot of political tension. There's going to be anger and tension over wearing masks, and anger and tension over not wearing masks. Lots of tension and anger. Uh, the news and information about all these things I just mentioned are going to totally conflict depending on which news source you listen to. Lots of confusion. Um, any issues that you maybe haven't been dealing with in your marriage, so you kind of blew it off and just stayed busy, that's about to come out. <laughs> um, same with your, your kids. If you have a kid that's been having a lot of issues and you just keep, keep, like, keep them in activities and stay super busy, that's about to come out. They're going to be at home. Some of y'all are going to find out it's not that teacher, it's your kid. <laughs> if you struggle with anxiety or depression, please prepare for this time. And if you don't struggle with anxiety or depression, um, you might find out what some of your friends have been telling you about. Uh, People are going to eat more, exercise less, drink more, do drugs more, and they will wear the same sweats and yoga pants every day. Uh, some giant horrible wasp called murder hornets are going to come over from Asia. I don't know. And uh, last of all, this is a really hot stock tip for you. I don't know if y'all like dabble in the stock market, but um, go ahead and invest in Procter & Gamble. They make Clorox wipes. And uh, if you go ahead and invest in something called Zoom Technologies, that's a good idea. If you don't know what Zoom is, that's okay. You'll know all about it by the time we are at the conference next year. Okay, we'll have a good year. Bye. <laughs> I mean, would you have even believed that? I wouldn't have. I would not have believed you if you told me all that. And for some of you, this has been a really difficult time of loss. And for you who are here hurting with that, I am sorry and I'm so thankful that you're here. And for some of you, you may have had blessings during that time, being with your family more and other blessings. And so I'm, for that, I'm, I'm happy for you and I'm thankful and I'm glad you're here too. 
But regardless of where you are in life right now, all of us have been pressed, right, at some point. And isn't it wonderful to know nothing took God by surprise, and he's equipped us to be ready for any times like this. In fact, this is nothing new. We might feel like it is, but it's not. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. He is still in total control. He is on his throne, and he is with you, and he has great plans for you. Do you know how much he loves you? You don't. He loves you more than that. My friend Megan and I were having Bible study. We were reading the book of John, and we were in John 7 and 8, and it was when Jesus was walking around on earth telling people, I am the Savior of the world. And it was the exact same stuff we're going through now. Anger, tension, confusion, division. It was all the same. Okay, so I'd like to take a second for y'all to get real with yourself. I want to ask you, where does your security and your strength lie? Now, we all know what the answer is. It's like little kids in Sunday school, you know, Jesus, that's the answer to everything. <laughs> and yes, that is true. But sometimes we tend to lean into things a little more than we should to get that sense of security and strength. So... Has your security and strength come from financial stability? For a lot of people, that's gone now. Does your strength and security come from having a happy family? For many, that's gone. Does your strength and security come from having a man in your life? For a lot of people, that's gone. Does your strength and security come from being physically fit and having control of your appearance? For a lot of people, that went out the window. <laughs> Does your strength and security come from being healthy, never feeling run down and accomplishing a lot? Oh, for a lot of people, that flew out too. I, about a year ago, last fall, year and a half ago, I was sick, y'all, so much and Boy, my pride issue came out. I get that one. Does your strength and security come from all of the likes you get on social media? Well, if so, it might be time to take a break from Facebook and Instagram. Does your strength come from a stable government that only has your best interest at hand? <laughs> that is a funny one, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, we know the answer to this. Psalm 62, 5 and 6 says, My soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from the Lord. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, I shall not be shaken. The woman that we are learning about today lives out that verse. She looks to God as her source of strength, and she knows that no matter how crazy a year she has, no matter how things might be taken away from her, she can stand firm in the Lord, and that will not be shaken. Isn't it great to know that that cannot be taken from us? Okay, so please turn, to your, uh, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 31. To get to Proverbs, just keep going right past Psalm. If you get to Isaiah or Ecclesiastes, you just passed it, take a U-turn and go back. Okay, so while y'all are getting there, I have to tell you, Heidi mentioned this, uh, that when you read this Proverbs 31 all about this woman, it can just be like, Oh, my goodness. And it just keeps building all these great things that she does. Okay, I'm one of those people who used to see her that way. And I mean, I, I admired her, and I knew it was the Bible, so I'm supposed to, oh, yeah, that's great. But I would read this, and I was just like, oh, good grief. 
I mean, come on. She wakes up when it's still dark. She takes out her sewing kit and she makes clothes for all of her family. And I imagine the outfits are like super cute. And then she goes out and she gets all this food and she comes in and cooks and it's probably like really good breakfast. And she's a great businesswoman. So she goes out and she buys some fields. And then she takes some money and she goes and works in the vineyard and she's doing like manual labor out there. And so it says that her arms are strong. So I'm guessing she's like a workout queen and super fit. And oh yeah, she's caring for the needy and the poor. So she's probably like volunteer of the year. And she comes back, it doesn't say this, but I'll bet she makes like a gourmet supper. And her family loves her and she's doing all this great stuff at home. And I guess they probably all go to bed, but it says that she stays up really late, takes back out the sewing kit. Now she's making more clothes, but this time it's to make money for her family. <sighs> yes, that's exhausting. And my thought was, did she ever stay up all night breastfeeding a colicky baby with greasy hair and then take care of her toddler the next day and just try to make it through? I mean, that's a tall order. Okay, the good news is if you've been seeing this that way, we're doing it wrong and I'm glad. <laughs> I saw Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 as a checklist. Y'all, Ladies, aren't you glad to know this is not a checklist? She's human. She's not perfect. She's approachable. She's not always on. That's not what this is about. Okay, so let's get some context here. Our verse for this conference is Proverbs 31, 25. But a lot of times if we just take a couple verses on their own and read them, we can make it say something that we want, but it's not what God intended. And so what I'd like to do is let's read uh, verses 10 through 31 and follow along with me. An excellent wife who can find for her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships, brings her food from afar. She rises while it's still night and gives food to her household. The portions to her maidens, oh, and portions to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She stretches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders in the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her, and her husband also. He praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates." All right, ladies. So the focus of all of this is her godly character. That's the point of this whole thing. The works and the impressive things just come out of it. So we can put that away for a little bit. We're focusing on her godly character. And as we do this, I want to ask you, will you please start to picture her in your mind? We're going to build it up, and I want you to start getting a picture of her, okay? All right, so we're looking at her character. The beginning, the intro to Proverbs in my Ryrie New American Standard uh, Study Bible says, the key to her beautiful character is her spiritual life. She is a godly woman who fears the Lord. Thus, the book ends just like it began, stressing the importance of reverence for God. 
this isn't about accomplishing a lot of good things. Aren't you glad to hear that? Because our world says, be super busy. What did you do today? Oh, I'm impressed. Look at her resume. And if you haven't gotten a lot done, it's easy to start feeling bad. That's not what this is. Okay, my Bible titles this section, The Capable Wife. But guess what I learned? It's not just about being a wife. It applies to every single one of you, married, unmarried, parents, not parents, old, young, everything in between. Oh, and this is cool. Guys in the sound booth, turns out this is about you too. Let's find out about that. Okay, the Hebrew term for Proverbs means a comparison, and here it's a collection of wisdom. Heidi told us about King Lemuel who wrote this. The introduction of the book of Proverbs in my Bible says, the teaching of the book of Proverbs is applicable to all men everywhere. The purpose of Proverbs is the reader might know wisdom and allow it to govern his or her life. So we have a lot to learn from this. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. Okay, I think this is super cool and you don't need to remember this, but it's interesting. Okay, that chunk of verses 10 through 31 is called an acrostic poem. And here's what that means. Every single verse starts with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Because the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters. Isn't that cool? We don't need to know that, but I just thought that was interesting. Okay, so let's start getting to know her. And I have to tell y'all, I'm giving you fair warning. I haven't been able to give this message without choking up and I hope today I won't but if I do I'm not apologizing because it's very powerful and personal to me so please just cover me in grace if I do okay all right so looking at Proverbs 31 25 she is clothed in strength and dignity and she looks at the future and smiles Notice that it starts off, she is clothed in strength and dignity. And notice it doesn't say she just has strength and dignity. It doesn't say that she does all this impressive stuff and then she earns strength and dignity. And it doesn't say that she takes her strength and dignity off like changing clothes depending on where she is. It says she is clothed in strength and dignity, and the word clothe in Hebrew is lebush. It's third, it occurs 33 times in the Bible with different meanings, lebush. And here it specifically, picture this, it's specifically of a princess like in Psalm 45, as she is brought in and presented to her king. Lebouche, dressed in royal robes. Can you picture that? That's beautiful. And it's also specifically of a warrior's tunic, as in 2 Samuel 20, as Joab is lebouche, clothed in military clothing with his sword and his sheath. Are you picturing this? The princess Labouche, clothed in those beautiful robes about to be presented to her king and a warrior ready for battle combined. All right, keep going with that picture. This term clothing goes all the way back to Genesis 3. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they are aware that they are without clothing. They're naked. Then God provides them with clothing and covering, and they come back close to him. God provides their clothing, and he does that for us. He clothes us in his salvation. So here, ladies, I need to ask you, why, why does it matter if we're clothed in salvation? We all have different backgrounds in this room, different denominations, different places we come from. Is it all about being a good person? Isn't that enough? You might be thinking, well, at least I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I mean, I'm probably doing pretty good. Why do we have the need for a savior? It's because we have a sin problem. 
The Bible tells us that God is perfect and heaven is perfect. But sin can't be there, not even a speck of it, or it wouldn't be perfect anymore. Sin is anything that's not pleasing to God and that misses the mark. And we all have it. In case you're thinking that you can go a whole day without having sin, without doing or saying anything that's not pleasing to God, well, I got to tell you, guess what? It also includes your thought life. <laughs> I just want y'all to picture the whole time you're at this conference, what if we had technology where all of your thoughts went up on that big screen behind us? <laughs> And it included when you were in the long line at the bathroom or you ran into her. <laughs> Awkward. Yeah, please don't ever make that technology. That terrifies me. <laughs> okay, so there's not one person in here that can go a whole day without sin, no matter how hard we try. So what do we do? What do we do about that sin problem? The Bible tells us that our sin separates us from God. Many people substitute the traditions and rituals of their family's religion for a personal relationship with the Lord. This is not about religion. It's not about how you were raised. It's not about what grandma believes. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal Church of Christ, Muslim, Jewish, any of that. This is about a personal relationship with the one and only true God. And it is so cool that all around the world, right now today, every tribe, tongue, and nation all over the world, there are people accepting that gift of salvation because he did it for us. Do you have any idea how much he loves you? Many of you are familiar with John 3.16, let this fall on fresh ears. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Can you imagine that love? John 14, 6, Jesus tells us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he tells us again in John 5, 24, truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment but has passed out of death into life. Y'all, there's no checklist. There's no go home and quit doing all the bad stuff that you do all the time and start doing all the good stuff that you should have been doing. It's right now, come as you are. It's Jesus plus nothing. And so right now, we are going to have a moment where everyone just bow your heads. And if there is any one of you in here who is not clothed in salvation, this is your time. Let's close our eyes. Y'all, it's not a magic prayer. You just say something like this. Dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for how much you love me. And I see now that I have a sin problem and my sin separates me from you. But Lord, you love me so much that you made a way. Your perfect sinless son died on that cross to take on all of my sins, even the ones I'm gonna do later that I don't know about. And Lord, I thank you so much that I can believe that he is my savior and know that and be accepted and received in salvation and have an eternal relationship with you. And Lord, I just want to get to know you better. I love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ladies, if any of y'all prayed that, please come see one of us. We want to celebrate that with you. And we also want to help get you started knowing God better. And you're already doing it by being here. And if you didn't just say that prayer, then come see me anyway, because I'd love to see you if you want to. Okay. So let's start looking at this a little closer. So we've started putting that in place. You've got her in your mind. She is clothed in strength. Look at what this does not say. It does not say she is clothed in lifting herself up by her bootstraps. How many times have we heard that? She is not clothed in good feelings, and she is not clothed in the power of po positive thinking. She is clothed in strength. 
Okay, the Hebrew, Hebrew word for strength is oz. It means strength, power, and might. It's the same oz that's in Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my oz strength. And it's the same O's from Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my O's strength and my shield. So is this strength coming from her? Is she just super awesome and we all wish we could be her? This strength comes from the Lord. It's the Lord's strength rising up in her. The, I'm going to butcher this, the Kiel and Delitzsch biblical commentary tells us she is clothed with O's, which is the power over temporal circumstances, which easily shatters and brings to ruin a household that's resting on less foundation. She is elevated. She has purpose, and she has true dignity. She is strong in the Lord. All the things earlier that came to mind when I was asking you that list about where does your strength come times come in when you lean in on something a little too much. Those things can be taken away so quickly, can't they? This strength is from the Lord, and it can never be taken away. This woman clothed in his, his strength and his dignity knows no matter how big the storm is, nothing can snatch her from his hand. No one can take that away from her. Are you starting to see her a little more clearly? Let's keep going. Okay, so now let's look at that word dignity. She is clothed in strength and dignity. Notice it doesn't say she is clothed in strength and an impressive list of accomplishments. I'm so glad it doesn't say that. <laughs> it does not say she is clothed in strength and conformity, and it does not say she is clothed in strength and popularity. The Hebrew here for dignity is hadar, which means, listen to this, honor, beauty, excellence, and majestic splendor. Whew. It's the same hadar that's in 1 Chronicles 16, 27, and it describes the Lord himself. Splendor and hadar majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. It's the same Hadar where David is describing God's glory in Psalm 21, 5. Great is his glory in your salvation. You bestow on him splendor and Hadar majesty. So is she striving hard to do stuff and conjure up her own dignity? Is she looking for approval from people to tell her you have great dignity? Where does this amazing dignity come from? It is straight from the Lord. It's his dignity, his majestic splendor, his beauty, his excellence. Okay, so now that we know this much about her, we also know what she does not regularly walk out. She does not live in a state of gossiping, comparing herself to others, and trying to be the same as so-and-so. She's not about measuring up. She is focused on knowing God personally. That's her priority. And she does it through his word. She knows the Lord well, and she is fully aware of who she is in him. Because she knows him, she knows that she has a divine purpose. She sees the world through his eyes, and that gives her an eternal perspective. Her strength and her dignity aren't coming from her charm or good looks or popularity or fitness or accomplishments or hearing compliments. It is God who clothes her in this strength and dignity. He clothes her in the brilliance of his own strength. She reflects his glory and people are drawn to her because she has something that they crave to fill their void she has God himself living in her. She loves him so much. Ladies, Heidi is amazing. I have learned so much from her. And I have a great pastor at this church. But let me tell you, if you are leaning on that to get him, you are missing it. And you are missing out. 
Those things are wonderful, but you need to be in his living word yourself. The Holy Spirit will reveal truth just between you and him. If you want to get to know someone, you don't go around asking everybody, hey, would you tell me more about them? You want to go hang out with them in person and get to know them yourself. It's the same thing here. This woman knows God more and more through his word, and the more that she lets those layers of foolishness from the world fall off of her to reveal the brilliant and powerful clothing of God's glory, it reveals her true self. She is created by him and for him, and she knows it. She shines brilliantly and beautifully and uniquely. She is the king's daughter. She knows she's adopted into his family, and she knows who she is because she knows who he is. She's beautiful. She knows her position. She is aware of what's going on around her and in the world, but she does not idly spend her time immersed in the world's problems, getting all riled up about things that she has no control over. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she looks at the future and she can smile. Even when people around her fall apart and freak out, she looks different because of God's presence in her being strong. Because of her time with God, she has the fruit of the Spirit. She has love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Our verse today is all about conditions of her heart. She lives in God's presence. Yes, she has bad days. Yes, she stumbles. But this is a consistency she has going on. It's the condition of her heart. She knows what's important until she goes home to heaven and she's preparing for it. So I want to tell you something that happened this summer. I told y'all the beach is my happy place. I just love it. Um, first of all, when you look at the beach, if y'all don't mind throwing that slide up, um, it's such a beautiful place. I know the beach isn't for everybody, but I love it. Okay, if you look at this picture, you can see that there's sand dunes on either side and there's seagrass on top. And notice how much beach there is. All the cars can drive on it and those little beach carts, you can lay out on it and enjoy the sunshine. And then way back is that water line where the ocean is. And it's so tranquil and beautiful. Okay, and then let's do the next slide. Okay, look at this sand dune picture. If you walk along the beach in Port Aransas, as you look up at the sand dunes, they're fluffy, soft, light sand dunes that you just kind of want to run and jump in them. Some of them, like this, have that cool pattern from where the wind blew them. But they have a peaceful slope. There's sea grass and sea oats that grow on top of them. If you look further back, it grows really thick. And most people don't really notice the sea grass and the sea oats. I mean... There's beautiful palm trees, and there's seashells, and you can hear the seagulls overhead, and there's the waves and the crash of them. But if you studied that seagrass, you would find out its roots go all the way down deep, and it is a complex, perfect root system. It anchors the sand dunes together, and during hurricanes and storms, they keep those huge sand dunes from blowing away and from the water washing all of it out to shore. They keep the habitats of all these animals and their nests safe that people never see. They hold everything together, and they even protect the beach houses that are way back there from getting damaged. It looks like regular old grass. I want to show you a video of a storm that I got to shoot this summer and watch the force and the violence of that water and how high up it comes and what's happened to the sand dunes.
that's the woman living in his strength and dignity. She stands firmly rooted in her faith with the confidence in Christ, and she might not be noticed, but that is not her concern. She knows she is clothed in his strength. She knows why she was created, and she is living out the purpose that he created for her. She is a beautiful warrior who stands in his strength and dignity. And when that violent storm comes rushing in and claws and rips at her, she lives out 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. She is hard-pressed on every side, but she is not crushed. She's perplexed, but not in despair. She's persecuted, but not abandoned. And she might get struck down, but she will not be destroyed. You see where that storm attacked and clawed at her and that reveals that her roots go all the way down. She's living out Colossians 2, 7. Having received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, she continues to walk in him, firmly rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as she was taught and overflowing with thankfulness. She's firmly rooted And where that enemy meant to come in and destroy her, it only made her stronger. The woman is rare. There are a lot of Christian women who are believers and they do good things. But this woman is rare. She is finer than jewels, finer than rubies. She's not rare because God only made a few of them. It's because few women choose to be transformed by him in this way. It's because most women who accept Christ as their Savior have amazing moments with him, but then settle for the scraps that the world has to offer, and they fit right in with everyone else. This woman is exquisite, and the Holy Spirit shines through her because she spends time with God in his word, and she knows him more and more. She doesn't look at life as just getting by. She has a heart and a mind that reach higher. She focuses on God more than she focuses on her circumstances, and she stands as a beacon of hope when people around her believe that they are defeated. She points them to Christ, and she offers real biblical truth, and she offers his hope. She lives out Isaiah 26, 3, that God keeps her in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him because she trusts in him. Ladies, are you seeing her more clearly as she builds together? Well, get up real close and see that she has your face. It's you. This woman is you. So I have to ask you, what are you going to do with this now that you know this? Are you going to leave here on an emotional high and let it just be the feelings and go back to life as usual? Because you can. That's what most women do. Most women just float through life without ever fully living out the purpose that is so exciting that God had for them. Or will you dare to say yes to him and rise up in his strength and dignity Would you be willing to take day-by-day steps to say yes and live out that life that he intended for you and be that woman of strength and dignity who looks at the future and smiles and she's a beacon of hope for a weary world that is desperate for God? Would you say yes? Let's pray. (laughs) Lord, we just praise you and thank you that you are revealing so much truth to us about who we truly are. Lord, I want to say yes to this, and I want to live out that Proverbs 31, 25 plan that you have in my life, and I'm scared of what you're going to ask me to give up or do or any of that, but Lord... I want to be that, and I pray right now for every woman here. Help them see it. Oh, can you imagine if we all rose up and said, yes, I thank you, Lord, that this is our time. I pray that we would do that, Lord. Follow you in obedience. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.